I really don't know how to start this video. I'm just gonna show you a little bit about the dev console. Uh, let's just hop into anything here, it doesn't matter. So, if you're in the game, press F1 to bring this thing up. This is the dev console, and it allows you to do a lot of things. First, let's uh, turn on dev mode. It's pretty useful. Make us invisible, make the enemies deaf, and yeah, make ourselves invincible too. Just so they make the enemies don't interfere. Um, dev mode is a really useful thing. Uh, it essentially just enables a few hotkeys that normally you don't have any access to. There's tab, which zooms out. You can uh, teleport yourself to your mouse cursor with, with Q. Really useful to get around the map if you made certain changes to certain units if you're looking for them. Um, you can hit home to uh, win a level. Which can be useful, I guess, but this is mostly all debugging stuff. Or useful for debugging or for like, checking your changes. And making those changes, though, is the more interesting thing. Actually, still. Well, I'm already on it. Another really useful thing for debugging and figuring certain things out about how the game works is the message debug thing. Um, this will just show you mostly sound radii, but also, um, for example, the, the range of uh, the help calls from the mech. You know, when, when they see you or you shoot at them, all enemy mechs will call for help. And any units around them within a certain radius uh, will come to their help. So if you enable this, you can see these all these purple uh, circles here show you the color, uh, show you the range of um, the sound, the engine sounds essentially of the mechs. If you own one too. So this is pretty good for various things when balancing weapons and vehicles. Lots of a rangefinder. Honestly, really don't know what that is useful for. The main thing you're going to be interested in, though, uh, is the data editor. This is where you're going to do most of the stuff. It's empty right now, because in order to actually do something with it, you need to load a file into it. And to do that, you go to the Pack File tab. And um, now you've just got all the files that are within the Assets Pack file. The Assets Pack file is, well, it's like something like 500 megabytes large. It's in the main rig of the folder and it just contains all the interesting stuff. You cannot currently um, get access to these files any other way than this. Actually, you can. You can get access to the files, but you cannot put them back together. Um, if you wanted to extract all of these out of the assets pack file you would need to use the dump pack command um, as a launch parameter and that will just create a folder in your Brigador folder called assets actually that folder is already there but it only contains the levels but if you use dump pack it'll also dump all of this or most of it I think these compressed images it will actually not dump which is the reason why you can't put it back together properly um, but all the other stuff will be there, and you can look at it in a file editor, like, uh, like, a, like a text editor, like Notepad. But you won't really be able to do anything with it, sadly. Um, it can be useful, I guess, for just learning a little bit more about the file structure. Um, you used to be able to extract the pack file and put it back together, which is really useful for a lot of modding things. Um, but in the recent versions, that has changed. Um, the dev said they will, at some point, um, give us the ability to actually do that again. But until then, you're gonna have to make do with the data editor. 
which will still allow me to do a lot of things. So, if you wanted to actually edit a file, let's see, what can we do? Oh, yeah, let's. Um, one of the main things that um, dumping the pack file and putting it back together allows you to do is to make new files for the game. So you could make new vehicles. Currently, you can only override old ones. If you, meant to, if you wanted to make a new vehicle, you would have to essentially replace an existing one. However, as far as I can tell, there are unused vehicles, and I assume also unused weapon files in the game. Um, let's see... Let's go to player vehicles, especially. Like, see, um, there is a the civilian right here in the player folder. That one is not used in any mission. So if you wanted to make a new vehicle without um, overriding any of the implemented existing ones, you could use him, for example. You should be careful with a few of these. Um, I tried loading one of these up and it crashed the game. Actually, no, that wasn't from the player folder, it was from the Corvette folder. But, um, but still, uh, anything you do in this might end up crashing your game, and I don't know how it is for other people, but some of the crashes I had with this game required me to actually hard reset, or like, really reboot my PC, because it kind of soft-locked my, my computer. So you've got to be wary of that risk, but generally nothing really system breaking has happened to me um, but yeah if we wanted to uh, one interesting thing to note here by the way is these asterisks that tell you whether any of these units are already loaded in the game and especially in the player folder um, you can be pretty sure that if there's no asterisk here, the unit is not, or this file is not used in the game currently. So you can probably use it as a uh, as a safe slot, essentially for a vehicle, a new vehicle or a new weapon or whatever you're making that you can then use. This is not true for the uh, vehicles outside the player outside the player folder. Because those are always only loaded for the specific map, map you're doing. So if you're doing a map with Corvette as enemies, it's not going to load any spacer vehicles, obviously. But the player vehicles um, that you can play as and that are currently implemented are always loaded at the beginning of the game. And I assume the same should also go for the weapons. But yeah, we click on this, on any of these files, and it will load it into the data editor can tell because it's marked green now. And now we can edit the, the file itself. And you can see it's pretty easy, it's, it's really nice and convenient, all the stuff has sliders to it. So for example, we could increase the health of this dude to 1000. We could also make it even higher. If you control left click on any of these sliders, you can actually input ma uh, values manually. So now we've got um, civilian with I don't know what how much gorillion health here I'm not sure whether that's gonna crash the game if I actually load it up so I'm I mean I if I wasn't making a video right now I would just test it out I don't care but um since I am making a video right now let's just set it to 10 uh, we could edit all these values here like that um but that you know who cares about that right now and um, one thing you'll note is, now that we've changed the file, the name of the file has become red. The, this change, the, uh, the 10 health that we now give him, is applied already. Obviously we're not playing as him right now, so we can't see any of that. And even if we were, I think we might have to reload the map for the change to become active. But um, you don't have to click Save Changes. For the, the changes to be applied. And that is kind of important, because the moment you click save changes, you cannot undo what you did. 
at least not easily. You can obviously just set the values back to what they were originally, but you need to remember what they were. Otherwise, you're gonna have to delete the entire pack file and re-download it to reset everything. And if you had some things that you didn't really want to revert, then that'd be really unfortunate. So, um, always make sure you test out your changes while these files are still marked in red uh, before you click save changes. You know, if you're not happy with it, don't click save changes. However, if you are happy with it, then do click save changes because otherwise it'll not be saved when you quit the game. But until then, everything you change is gonna be, uh, you know, is gonna be applied. So, yeah, like right here you can just change all the things Related to the to the vehicle data. One thing to note is that, um, for example, if you wanted to change the speed of this dude, this is not handled in the vehicle file, or the, the unit file, I guess it technically is. It's handled in the leg file. So if we want to change that. We right-click this because if we left-click, um, most of the time, it's gonna open up this list of other. Um, files that you could technically put into this place. This doesn't mean that it's not gonna crash the game if you do. Like, I'm, you know, this is a sprite for a unit. I'm not sure what would happen if I put a, uh, a tracer sprite in there. I'm not gonna try it now. I will when I'm done making this video, but I mean, it, it would certainly look interesting, I imagine. Um, but yeah, to, to change a file, to load it into the data, as you can see, we now have the the leg file here, if you still got the unit file there, you right click them. And uh, yeah, right here we have the vehicle data, not to be confused with the vehicle vehicle data of the uh, the unit file, which contained uh, health, the shield, overcharge, mass, some other things. But this one contains all the speed and dampening and acceleration stuff. So, I don't know, let's just, let's increase the speed to like 30, but make his acceleration relatively slow. Why not? Um, there's a few things you can change here. You can also, I see, yeah, this is the, um, the ability, um, like the, the vehicle ability essentially is what, you, what happens when you press space from what I remember. Um, I tested this out earlier, it doesn't, it does nothing. Um, but I'm not sure whether I can just put in like a max stomp in here and it'll work fine, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's, if you're actually making a vehicle or making changes, some, there's probably a lot more you're gonna be doing. Um, but, you know, that's just all reading what all these sliders do and figuring out what you want them to be. I don't think I need to cover that. But what I do need to cover is the global file. Come on, this, right, there we go. The global file is very important. It does a lot of things. And one of the things it does, it kind of... Um, determines the menus. You also have like the spawn lists here, for example. So you can, uh, come on, like, can you? Yes, you can. Uh, these are the different levels. It's like the strength levels of the spawns, of the enemies. Um, and yes, it does even contain all the stuff. So if you wanted to change what enemies you face at what difficulty levels, you could do that here. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to go to the mech tab. These um, only affect the mechs that are selectable by the player. Essentially, this is, this is exactly the list, like the vehicle list that you get in Freelance when you select your loadout. Uh, you can see it has like, it, it, it literally is one-to-one -one that menu. This is what makes that menu and the, the the list and the tabs in it. It even has um, extra items here just for the spacing, for the little gaps between the, the groups. So, 
and yeah, these are the actual lists of the vehicles. You can uh, just remove any vehicle you want, but you can also add some new ones. So we want to add first. We want to add a new category, I guess. Actually, let's let's be real proper and make some spacing here. And then we're gonna add the infantry category. Now let's not use all caps. Wait, no. Yeah. Then we need to click list to actually go to the list of infantry vehicles, and here we add the actual vehicle. You double click that, and uh, now we've added the um, little civilian dude to the roster of selectable mechs for the player. Again, we don't need to hit save changes or anything right now. What we do is we press F5 to go to the main menu. You can obviously also use escape and resign. At least nowadays you can. In the early versions, when you had death mode enabled, escape actually quit the game. Which was pretty annoying. And as you can see, we now have access to this dude. Um, yeah, he doesn't have any weapon mounts on him. What a surprise. I'm not entirely sure how to implement those. Um, you can... You can't really slap just any any mount and any hull together like that. I mean, you can, but you can. You, you need to actually look into all of the files and make sure that um, certain entries there are correct. There were a few game-breaking uh, bugs I encountered in the staging builds, um, all related to just some hull file having the wrong mount and vehicle using that having the wrong weapon assigned to that mount and it would just crash the game. Um, if you have the console enabled, and I don't mean this one, though I guess this one I think this one would work too, I guess. Um, yeah, actually, you, if whenever you load a level doing this, this might be a good idea to have this open because you can see the error report right away, I assume. Uh, you can al there's also a command, a launch parameter, if you use console as a launch parameter to get this to run as a separate window in the background. Um, though we should probably run the game in windowed mode to actually see it. Uh, as I said, for me, when certain kinds of crashes happen, my PC just soft locks itself completely because of how the game window is handled and I can't all tap out of it or anything. Um, but if you run it in window mode and you have console enabled, you have a separate console running like exactly this, just as a separate window in the background, which really helps. But yeah, I'm not sure exactly how we would get weapons on this dude, but I think there should be a way. Maybe. The, the problem is you would have to put a chassis or a hull on him. I always confuse the two, I think. And um, those are always attached to sprites, and you know, we still want the civilian to look like a civilian, don't we? I mean, I guess you could make just literally a walking tank. I don't know. Anyways, we can now play with them. We can even deploy smoke. feels like I'm not going... Is, is this really 30? Uh, oh yeah, there it is. Is this really 30 speed? Well, I mean, let's, let's just set it to 100. That should be a notable difference, right? I mean, his acceleration is really slow, but... Do you have to reload the map for these changes to take effect? Let's see. Also, we could actually make him control like a mech, which... In this case, I honestly don't quite see what the difference would be.
Uh, where's the turn speed? There, angle velocity. I'm not quite sure how these dudes work. He always seems to be here. Uh, like he doesn't seem to actually change his speeds. I'm really not sure what this is about. Normally this should all work. Let's try with a different vehicle. Let's just... Oh, whatever, let's just do it here, why not? Um, another thing, another way you can select vehicles, by the way, which is a lot easier, often. If you have a vehicle just on the map, you can just go to Mac Debug. And select Mac, and then you can just literally click on it. And if it's your player Mac, then you don't even need to do that. Because you can just go to Player Mac, down here. And then right click this. I think you can also le left click it in the Mac debug menu actually. Um, so now we got this leg. Um, oh, wait, I'm done. Right click. Yeah, see, here it works. So the way must reboot the mark target to accept contract. Oh, this is new. At least I never heard that before. But yeah, see here it actually works and you know now we can't move at all and you now we're super fast. No idea why it doesn't work with the with the soldier with the civilian. But yeah, this is how you use the data editor and a lot of the things in it. Um, for weapons the process is essentially the same. Um, actually just hey here we go these are the weapons right click this and I guess the most important thing to note here is that a weapon consists of the actual weapon and its ammo and um, like here down here the bullet the bullet is what determines um, the damage mainly and the range I guess uh, this is something I should mention. You have this range parameter here. It doesn't do anything for projectile weapons. If you have a beam weapon, so if you made it a laser down here, I think this is where you change that at least. Uh, I'm not sure right now actually. Is that changed? see. Lasers have bullets now too. Cannon, flame, MG. No, I don't think so. Maybe you have to reload. Let's try that. No? Well, I'm not sure how that works then. At least not anymore. Because... Laser weapons or beam weapons used to not have a bullet, but instead they had a tab here called beam parameters. And um, that you would use that to actually determine the damage and stuff. I'm actually not sure how it works now. Or uh, maybe I'm just missing something. I guess this really just, it really just determines the ammo type. Huh. Interesting. Oh. I think this might be something that's determined outside of this. You cannot do this here. Yeah, let's, let's try. Do I have a laser by chance? Nope, I don't. But I think we can just put a laser on this. Um. Yeah, whatever. Just put this one on. I think we need. Yeah, we need to reload the map for this. Still on a laser? Really? 
I guess you can't change. Oh wait. Think I oh, yeah, know. I think I know how this would work. Select it here and hit respawn. There we go. Yeah, now we have a laser on here, or a beam weapon. And if we look at this. the wrong one didn't I yeah here we go yes this is what I was talking about you have the beam parameters laser damage impact parameters explosion parameters laser days all that stuff and you do not you do not have a bullet file anywhere whereas with all other weapons you have a bullet file and this bullet file determines Again, mostly of the damage and stuff, whereas the weapon file itself handles ammo capacity. Um, yeah, pretty much only ammo capacity and firing, uh, firing, fire rate, some other things. Um, and the thing that really affects the range is the speed. It also affects the arc, as you can see. So if I you know, put that higher. I mean, it makes sense, you know, in... Uh, in real life, this is kind of what really affects the range of a weapon, too. So now we have kind of a short... turn the Abbot into kind of a short-range mortar. Um, you can also... But that was in the weapon file, though. Switch a weapon from being... Like low and high arc weaponry. See, now it's a high arc weapon, and I guess with. Yeah, see, I can't flatten this out anymore to this. Though with uh, short range weapons, ballistic ones at least, it kind of. You don't really have to enable the low arc, uh, the, the high arc, I mean. Because they'll, they'll end up being kind of high arc either way. I'm actually not sure whether the gutter... No, the gutter ball, I think, is a high arc weapon. I'm not sure. Either way, this is, I assume, the most important things you need to know. Oh. Um, I just want to check one last thing. Okay, it is the chassis. Every vehicle needs a chassis, then. And the chassis is what determines the weapon mounts. Um, so if you want to put weapons on a mech, you need to make sure that it has the right mounts in here. Otherwise that won't work. Um, Ah, yeah, this, this also determines whether the, um, this is neat, this isn't, this isn't hard-coded to, um, only allow turret mounts to rotate independently, I assume. I guess you can see right now the, the red line there, that's our turret mount. It turns independently of the head, whereas our abbot is fixed to the head, so it turns with the head, and the head turns slower than the turret could uh, decrease. Oh, rotation width, I assume, is... I mean, that needs to be reloaded as well. Yeah, rotation width determines the uh, gimbal limits of your gun. As you can see, I can't turn the vehicle 360 degrees anymore, uh, the, the turret. And I assume all I need to do make the abbot turn yeah the sprite doesn't actually know the does the sprite turn with it yeah I think it does I th yeah it does that's neat um, let's see what I can quickly no I can't that was a way you could zoom in, but I forgot how it worked. I think it was in the global file. Ye 
Yes. Sprites look really ugly up close. You might be able to see the abbot actually turn. Actually, well, now what I'm at it, another thing to, I can show you how to do is how to change the lighting of the level. It's in random control lighting. And uh, all the lighting files are called weather files. And uh, actually, let me zoom out a little bit. Global, there we go. Camera zoom. One. Lighting. Um, you have essentially three kinds of, well, four kinds of lights actually. One is the directional light, which is basically your sun. You can see I can change the uh, the direction that the sunlight is coming from. If you look at the, the walls up here, you can see it pretty easy. Now they're lit from, uh, yeah, I assume like down, down right essentially. So you can turn the sun, and you can also change the angle which the sun is. So now it's coming from straight up top. And this is for the color of the sunlight. And then you have... Oh no, there is three kinds of light, yeah, and there's like the diffuse and... Intensity. Then you have uh, point lights, which are essentially all um, like headlights and uh, like pretty much every every light source um, other than the sun. Um, their colors are individually determined. Like they, every point light has an extra file. Where you can set the the color and the range and like the cone width and the the drop off and some other things. Um, those would all be in the lights category. And then there is the volumetric um, light, which is essentially the cones of light. Um, yeah, here we go. You can see it. Like if you do it, if you make it like this, everything looks kind of foggy. And this, like this, everything looks pretty clear, and you can, you know, they 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 can have colors or kind of tints independent of them. the actual light sources. You can see, so now it looks like there's green fog everywhere. Um, but yeah, now we can get a better look at the. The abbot turning through the two row. I wish I had an A graph right now to stop the head from moving. Where is it? There. Yeah, you should be able to see pretty clearly now that this thing is turning on its own. But yeah, that, I'd say, are uh, pretty much all the basics you need to know about the death console. And uh, I hope I can encourage some people to start playing around with it a lot more. I wouldn't start any big modding projects at the moment because the game is still getting patched and without being able to dump the pack file, um, there is no way of properly backing up your work and to implement it in a newer version again. So you uh, have to redo everything you have done every time a new update runs out, uh, comes out. Um, but dabble around in it, because at some point, apparently we will be able to, to do all that stuff again. Or at some point, Brigadol will just stop getting updates anyways, and, you know, then that doesn't matter that much anyways. That would be nice if we get access to the to the pack file because there's a lot more stuff you can do that's 
you know more convenient to do if you get access to all the individual files in there. Um, yeah, dabble around with it, see what you can make. Uh, look through the game files, look at all the things that uh, you you can see a lot of things in there that were supposed to be in here at some point, or that 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 hint at certain things from back in the development. Uh, that never made it into the game. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. So yeah, have fun with that. I certainly did.